to Scripture verse by verse. My name is Michael Moret. Mark chapter 7, verse 1 is where we resume our study today. Get your Bible, open it up to Mark chapter 7, verse 1. The Scripture verse by verse website is found at the Bible verse by verse dot com. Study the entire Bible with me. Four complete times going on five. It's all archived going back 37 years. All you have to do is choose, click, and listen. All you need to bring is your Bible and a hunger for God's Word. That's at the Bible, verse by verse, dot com. <clears throat> and Father, we pray that you would sanctify us by your truth. Your Word is truth. In Jesus' name, amen. Mark 7, verse 1, Then came together unto him the Pharisees and certain of the scribes, which came from Jerusalem. The scribes and the Pharisees, the religious leaders, are coming to Jesus. And every single time they come to Jesus, they're up to no good. Do you ever know somebody who you know when they call you or nowadays text you, I suppose, but the only time they would give you a call is if they're up to no good. They're up to something, and it doesn't take long usually to figure it out. There are people like that. I've known people like that in my life. That's how the scribes and the Pharisees were to Jesus. Anytime they approached Jesus, they were up to no good. They're trying to trap Jesus. And they're trying to discredit him in front of the people. And they're trying so many ways to do that. So far they have failed. Verse 2, And when they saw some of his disciples eat bread with defiled that is to say, with unwashing hands, they found fault. Well, they're always finding fault with something that Jesus is doing. You know why? It's because Jesus stuck to the written word of God and didn't give one single bit about the religious rulers' man-made religious laws. So they were finding fault as if he was violating Scripture. Do you ever know any religious people like that? I have fundamentalist, and I consider myself a fundamental. I don't consider myself an evangelical. I consider myself a fundamentalist. But how I define fundamentalism is I stick to the Word of God, and that's the only thing that we have as a mandate is to stick to the written Word of God. Unfortunately, many modern-day fundamentalists are very legalistic, and they pile man-made rules upon the Word of God. And they treat them as if they are Holy Scripture. And boy, are you looked down upon if you don't follow those rules. Just like the Pharisees. Exactly. They pile so many man-made rules on top of the Word of God that pretty soon the Word of God is hidden. So, Jesus was not eating. When it says, when it says that, that Jesus was eating without eating, with, with unwashed hands. That does not mean that he was eating bread with filthy, grimy, dirty hands. That's not what that's talking about. That's not what the Pharisees are even concerned about. The religious leaders are not concerned about germs. They're concerned that Jesus and his disciples did not go through a complicated religious ritual like they did before they ate. Boy, they had a good one going. Very elaborate. And people looked up to him. Wow, aren't they pious? Look at the washings that they go through. Why, isn't that something? And so they attacked Jesus because he and his men are not doing it. Well, there's a reason. The Word of God doesn't know of any such thing which is why Jesus totally ignored it. it, meant nothing to him. If it's not in the written word of God, it shouldn't mean anything to you. The only thing that we should concern ourselves with is what does the Bible say? What does God say? And if that's not enough for somebody, then walk away from them. Don't deal, I don't deal with people like that anymore. I just don't. 
If somebody has an honest question about something and I give them an answer from the Word of God, if they have a follow-up question and it's sincere, I'll spend as much time as I need to with them. But the moment I, I pick up on the fact that they are trying to promote man-made stuff and they're not interested in the written Word of God, that's when I walk away. Because that's what Jesus did. After rebuking them. Verse 3, For the Pharisees and all the Jews except they wash their hands oft, eat not, holding the tradition of the elders. See, it doesn't have anything to do with the word of God. It's just the tradition of the elders. All this stuff was nothing more than man-made tradition. It had nothing to do with the Holy Bible. Nothing whatsoever to do with God. These religious leaders wanted to impose their man-made laws on everybody else, including Jesus. He just ignored them in a very matter-of-fact way, which is something that you and I ought to do. Four. And when they come from the market, except they wash, they eat not. And many other things there be, which they have received to hold, as the washing of cups and pots, brazen vessels, and of tables. In other words, the leaders had many religious rituals that they would go through, and they tried to bind everybody with these man made rules. 5. Then the Pharisees and the scribes asked him, Why walk not thy disciples according to the tradition of the elders, but eat bread with unwashen hands? The religious rulers answered their own question. Because all it was, was the tradition of the elders. You just answered your own question. It has nothing to do with the Bible. It's the tradition of the elders. You say, Moret, you're against tradition. No, I'm not. I like tradition. I'm, I, I'm, a, a, I'm a fuddy-duddy. I don't like change. I like tradition. I like I like traditional things that we do or that I do certain times of the year. I like that. I like those sorts of things. But I don't mandate my traditions to everybody else that I meet and look down on them if they don't keep them saying that they're violating God, that they're going against God by not doing what I do in my traditions. There's nothing wrong with tradition. But there's nothing wrong with tradition if it lines up with the Word of God. And if you don't equate it with the written Word of God, then it's fine. Verse 6. He answered and said unto them, Well hath Isaiah, Isaiah prophesied of you hypocrites, as it is written, this people honoreth me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. The religious rulers honored God with their lips. Well, they talked a lot about God. They talked a lot about holiness. They talked a lot about how people should be. But they were not holy themselves. Everything they did was to impress other people religiously. And I think Jesus is going to get into that. Verse 7, Howbeit in vain do they worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. That's what they did. That's what I've been talking about. The Bible says that we must worship God in spirit and in truth. In spirit. The only kind of worship, those who worship God must worship him in spirit and and in truth. In other words, to worship God properly, we must live the way he wants us to live, and we must do what he wants us to do in spirit and in truth. To know how he wants us to live, we have to read the Bible. We have to read his word because that's where God's will is found out. That's where we find it. So when you teach something other than the word of God, and you command people to worship God in that manner, according to what you teach that has nothing to do with the Word of God, that, that type of worship is vain. 
God does not accept it because it's not worship that lines up with the Holy Spirit and truth, truth being the written word of God. It's a waste of time. And that's what the Pharisees, the religious leaders, promoted. No wonder society was a mess. No wonder the people who went to church, as it were back in those days, were on the way to hell. And it's like that today. Many people who go to church are on their way to hell because they're following traditions taught by men. Oh, you don't have to repent. Just repeat the sinner's prayer. Where's that found in the Bible? Both of those things, neither of those things are found in the Bible because we're commanded to repent. Unless you repent, you will likewise perish. And as far as praying the, the sinner's prayer, just repeating that prayer and thinking you're saved, repent is what God's word teaches. And receive Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Not follow the ritual of a sinner's prayer or communion or baptism or confirmation and thinking that that makes you a Christian and you're on your way to heaven. People are following these man-made traditions from modern evangelicals, from fundamentalists, from mainline churches, and they think they're okay, but all they're doing is following the traditions of men, and it's not going to do them one bit of good on Judgment Day. So the religious leaders set aside the Word of God to do these man-made rituals, and they made these rituals and their teachings more important than the written Word of God. And that's a problem. Anytime that anything becomes the focus of a church or the focus of a ministry, other than the written word of God, that is a problem, and it's a problem that better be corrected because there are immortal souls at stake. Nine, and he said unto them, Full well ye reject the commandment of God that ye may keep your own tradition. So, when it, came, when it came down to one of their man-made traditions or the Word of God, and there was a contradiction between the two, these rulers would always choose tradition, and they would ignore the Word of God. So Jesus is about to give an example of how they did that. Let's begin in verse 9. And he said unto them, Full well ye reject the commandment of God that ye may keep your own tradition. For Moses said, Honor thy father and thy mother, and whoso curseth father or mother, let him die the death. But ye say, If a man shall say unto his father or mother, It is Corban, that is to say, a gift by whatsoever thou mightest be profited by me, he shall be free. And ye suffer him no more to do aught for his father and mother, making the word of God of none effect through your tradition which ye have delivered, and many such things, such like things, do ye. So this is, this is the example that Jesus gave. He just accused them of set aside, set aside the, word, or the word of God for the sake of their tradition. Here's a perfect example of what they did. He quotes the scripture that children are to honor their father and mother. That means when the father and mother get old and they can't take care of themselves, help them out. The religious leaders had a man-made rule that said, well, if you're going to give a hundred bucks to your mom and dad so that they can buy food and not starve to death, if you're going to do that, but you want to instead dedicate that to our religion, then you can say, I dedicate it to the religion of the Pharisees, and then you are off the hook as far as taking care of your mom and dad. So what they did by that religious man-made tradition, that rule that contradicts scripture, was allow people to break the commandment, honor your father and mother, in favor of keeping their religious tradition. A horrible thing. Anytime... We break the commandment of God and we put, the, we put the tradition of man, religious rules, or any other man-made idea above the Word of God, somebody is going to suffer. And most of the time, 
They are innocent people. We'll stop right there. We'll pick it up right here next time. Remember, study all of God's word with me at thebibleversebyverse.com. If you'd like to be a part of this ministry, the ministry of Scripture Verse by Verse, that has been teaching God's word without watering it down, not one single solitary verse in 37 plus years, you can be a part of this ministry by praying for me and God's word. And I certainly would appreciate that. And when you take a break from studying with me at the thebibleversebyverse.com, go to the front page, click the donate button, and prayerfully give us a Lord may lead, because that also makes you a part of this ministry, and I'd appreciate that. And until next time, thanks for studying with me. This is Michael Moret for Scripture Verse by Verse. So long, everyone.